I came up at a time when the corporate ladder was greased to keep women off it. I climbed it anyway, stepping over some little bitch like you on every rung. The big dog is off the porch now, Beth, and I will tear you to fucking pieces. Starting with an SEC investigation into you for market manipulation and insider trading. You want to fight? Let me introduce you to the fight of your fucking life. After having been gunned down, John fights for his life, but manages to write down the attacking car's description in the sand, using his own blood. When Rip then finds him, he calls Casey, who had just killed his own attackers, and gives him the details of the van, resulting in Casey chasing and killing his father's assailants, but also getting shot in the process. Meanwhile, Beth stumbles out of the debris that used to be her office, covered in dust and blood. Jimmy, on the other hand, survives his fall, but is temporarily paralyzed. While smoking outside the hospital John is in, Beth has a touching encounter with a young teen named Carter, who is grieving the impending loss of his dying father. When his father then dies, Beth feels an attachment to the boy and wishes she could be his mother. Sometime later, Rip visits Rourke, who had orchestrated the attack on some of the Dutton Ranch hands earlier, Wanting to exact revenge on him, Rip opens his cooler, and from it throws a rattlesnake in Rourke's face, forcing the creature to bite the Dutton enemy. Soon after, Rourke dies from the venomous bite, with Rip watching him. Months after the attack, John and Casey are shown to have made a good recovery. Together, they contemplate about their situation, but disagree over who ordered the hit on them. Based on what Beth thinks, John believes Jamie is responsible, but Casey doesn't think so. Later at an upscale bar, Beth meets her former mentor, Bob Schwartz, who didn't fight for her when she was let go by Willa Hayes, the former CEO of Market Equities. Feeling betrayed by this, Beth tells him that he needs to retire before she takes everything he has. Meanwhile, Caroline Warner, the chairwoman of Market Equities, meets with Thomas Rainwater at a dig site for their new airport, where bones and relics are found, halting the construction of their new investment. She offers Rainwater to work together and to fund his plans of building a casino, but also to build a whole town around it, turning it into a luxurious global destination and using their new airport to bring people from all over the world to Montana trading the nature around them for a corporate cash cow and showing their unquenchable capitalist greed. After a long process of physical therapy, Jimmy returns to the ranch. John tells him that Jimmy broke his word to him by rodeoing again, so he sends him away to the Four Sixes, a cowboy ranch in Texas, to find out once and for all if there's a cowboy in him or not. Carter is later brought onto the ranch by the Sheriff Haskell, after he is caught trying to rob a store with a screwdriver and had given Beth up as his guardian, Beth decides to take him in, even though Rip is against the idea. Casey leads a SWAT team and takes out the remaining members of the militia that executed the hit on his family, cutting them down one by one wherever they are holed up. Having recovered, Jimmy bids his bunkhouse crew and a displeased Mia, his girlfriend, farewell, as he prepares to leave for his new job at the Four Sixes. At the Yellowstone, Beth tries her hand at parenting Carter, but realizes that she isn't good at it. Rip is always there for her, even though they disagree on how she relates with a troubled teenager like Carter. Things aren't good between Casey and Monica either, after the fallout from the attacks, as Tate, their son, is still traumatized from killing the man who attacked Monica during their fateful day. At one of the Native American casinos, Rainwater and Moe pick up a guy named Checkers after he had boasted to be behind the attacks on the Dutton family, having squeezed out of him that a prisoner named Terrell Riggins had given him the order, Rainwater hands him over to John, along with the gathered information. Having no more use for him, John decides to duel Checkers in a form of old-fashioned 
quick draw, and kills him on the spot. John asks Casey to seek Jamie's help, who now is an attorney general, to find out more about the prisoner Riggins. Meanwhile, Jamie has finally settled in his new ranch with his biological father, Garrett Randall, who had been released recently from a 30-year prison sentence. During a meeting with Market Equities, Beth goes up against Caroline Warner, who gives her two options. They can either slug it out with each other, or Beth can come working for me and build destination towns in every valley in Montana. In exchange, Beth wants Mee's controlling interest in Schwartz and Meyer, so she can fire Bob Schwartz and have his grandchildren to live on welfare. At the Dutton bunkhouse, tension between Lloyd and Walker rises, because Walker stole Lloyd's girl, Laramie. John and Rip try to broker peace between the duo, but no avail. On their way to the Four Sixes, Travis mentors Jimmy on the sacredness of purpose when he asks Jimmy why he loves the rodeo. Jimmy tells him he loves the crowds, lights, and cheers, but Travis tells him to do it for the horse instead. At his office, Jamie is handed a file with the history of Riggins' cellmates and is shocked when he sees his biological father's name, Garrett Randall, on the list. After a thorough soul-searching, Beth finally accepts Caroline Warner's offer and starts working for Market Equities. Wasting no minute, she goes to Bob and fires him from his own company. Due to Tate's fear, Casey has been spending time with Monica and Tate at Monica's father's home on the reservation, giving the boy time and space to completely heal from his trauma. At his livestock office, Casey is confronted by environmental activists led by Summer Higgins. After the activists are arrested, John shows up and talks with Summer, but they are unable to convince each other of their points of view. However, John eventually bails her out and even takes her back to the ranch. At the bunkhouse, Lloyd is determined to teach Walker a lesson, but instead, he finds himself getting into Rip's bad books. Rip punishes him by taking his colt from him and forces him to ride a mare in the full glare of everyone. To find out if his father is really behind the attacks, Jamie visits Riggins, who confirms his father's involvement. Arriving home, his father shows him his ex-girlfriend, Christina, along with his baby boy, further increasing his dilemma to decide who his real family is. The Duttons are not relenting on their quest to protect their ranch at all cost, as a family, from outside forces and those close by. But each of them is now considering pursuing their happiness first. John finds himself flirting with Summer when he invites her back to the ranch and she spends the night. But Beth isn't pleased about this. John soon realizes how deeply these two women dislike each other. While Beth contemplates her love life with Rip and officially settles down with him, Jamie then decides to confront his father about the attacks on the Duttons. But his father is able to convince him that he is his only real family, not the Duttons. Meanwhile, in the bunkhouse, Lloyd loses control and stabs Walker. After Walker is patched up, John tells Rip to dismiss the girls from the ranch and organize an all-out fight. The following day, Lloyd and Walker enter the arena and fight for hours until Lloyd is left standing. Rip then enters the arena and beats Lloyd up and even breaks his fingers. With both Walker and Lloyd humbled, the latter helps the former up and they leave the arena with their tension dissolved. While the Duttons are getting their hands dirty physically and politically, Jimmy and the Wranglers work for a herd at the Four Sixes. He gets the shock of his life when the ranch's vet, Emily, asks him out. Meanwhile, Beth's first day at Market Equities starts on a bad note. She smokes in her office, fires her assistant, and learns that the investment firm she is now working for isn't just planning to construct an airport on and near her father's land, but to build an entire touristic city. Beth processes her discovery and finds an unlikely ally in Summer Higgins. At his home, Garrett plans for Jamie's run for governor, alongside Christina. Meanwhile, incumbent governor Lionel Carey, John's ex-lover, informs John of her support for Jamie's candidacy. 
But this gets John perplexed, and he decides to enter the race himself, believing that Jamie cannot hold the responsibility of governor. He later invites Beth, Rip, and Carter, now living as a family unit, to stay with him at the lodge. Finally, Lloyd makes peace with Walker, pawning his rodeo possessions to get him a new guitar. In the broken Rock Indian Reservation, Casey and Mo go after the 18 horses stolen from Avery's racing family. Avery tries to warm up to Casey as a show of gratitude, but she soon finds out that Casey is a one-woman man, and he loves Monica madly. During a press release, Governor Carey reveals the person she will support as her candidate for governor, and much to Jamie's surprise, the candidate is his adoptive father, John. Furious by the betrayal of Governor Kelly, Jamie realizes his slim chances at the polls against John, whom he thinks is impossible to beat. But Garrett and Christina counsel him to still run against his adoptive father by promoting progress instead of remaining unchanged, the main principle that John uses for his campaign. Meanwhile, Summer Higgins and Beth work together to bring down market equities by having Summer and her activists protest at the airport while filming their bloody removal of the lands on orders of market equities, and thus showing the world the iron fist of the company's greed. At the reservation, Monica shares the news that she is pregnant, with Casey and Tate happily uniting the family again. To find out more about the prisoner, Terrell Riggins, John and Rip are heading to meet the Sheriff Haskell. However, when they arrive at the diner, they notice the place is being robbed. They sneakily carry out a rescue attempt and manage to kill all the robbers. But the sheriff also loses his life in the process. Beth raves at Rip for not stopping John from walking into a diner ridden with armed robbers, resulting in a violent shootout, while John gets a prison call from Summer Higgins. John goes to meet with the interim sheriff, Bill Ramsey, and realizes he is no pushover, unlike his predecessor. Afraid she will be prosecuted for pushing the officer who arrested her, Summer Higgins feels used by Beth and is worried over the mess she is in. Riding along with Rainwater and Mo, Casey is still trying to understand the significance of the wolf ritual suggested by Rainwater. Mo urges him to give it a try, and he agrees. He is left in the mountains for four days without food, water, or help. On his way to summer, John runs into Garrett in a diner back in town and threatens him subtly. At the four sixes, Jimmy and Emily agree that they are meant for each other. Jimmy later bumps into Travis at the horse show, and Travis informs Jimmy that he is to take him back to the Dutton Ranch, with Jimmy unable to break his word to John again and agrees. Back at the lodge, John and Beth have an altercation over the mess she has got Summer into, telling her that he is disappointed in her leading to Beth feeling unappreciated and heartbroken. Jimmy finally returns to the Dutton Ranch in the company of Emily, telling everyone that Emily is his fiance. This angers Mia, and much to Jimmy's disgust, a fight ensues between the two rival women. Craving Texas, Jimmy later gets John's blessing to leave Yellowstone with Emily, if that's what he wants, and he does so. In the mountains, Casey's vision quest sends him on a hallucination spree, and this scares the hell out of him. He returns to Monica a changed man, and reveals to her that he saw the end of them. Meanwhile, Beth makes amends with John after listening to Rip's timely advice. Lobbying for Summer, John meets with Judge Mitchell Davis, but Davis still sentences Summer to 37 years for various charges. John manages to get him to suspend the felony charges against her, resulting in only an eight-month sentence. Posing as a hooker, Beth visits Riggins in prison, and the only thing that Riggins can give her is that Jamie visited him in prison. This comes after she has been fired by Caroline Warner from the market equities, as her secret schemes had been discovered. On her way back, she kidnaps and forces a priest to get her and Rip wedded with just John, Carter, and Lloyd as witnesses. She then later confronts Jamie and issues him an ultimatum to kill Garrett, or he dies. Jamie decides to kill his biological father to save his own neck. While dumping his father's body, Beth takes a compromising photo of Jamie, telling him that she owns him. 
Russia. Take me to the land where I was down my hand. Put me to peace in the pine. So take this body home. My soul has gone away. Yeah.